All right, I wanted to take some time to show you guys how to use everybody's favorite online calculator to do regression equations. So we're in Desmos, and it actually hasn't done regression equations for a while, but they just upgraded, and so uh, it's a good idea to learn how to take advantage of this feature. So when we're doing any regression equation, the first thing you need is data. So then you can look at the data and see what kind of pattern it holds. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a set of data. Now what's really cool, some of you may know this, some of you may not, but that you can copy and paste tables from spreadsheets into uh, Desmos. So I'm going to go ahead and go to a spreadsheet that I have, and I'm going to grab this middle set, I think. We'll do years versus population. I'm going to copy that and paste it into Desmos. Now it does this nice uh, thing for me. It zooms for me so I can see the relationship between the... Uh, the X and Y values, but I can also change the zoom myself if I want, scrolling in and looking at it a little more closely. Another thing you'll notice is that it go ahead and it defines your X as X1 and your Y as Y1. This is important and we're going to need to use it when we find our regression equation, so make a note of it. All right, as I look at this data, it looks to me like it is pretty linear. So the parent function I'm going to use for this is linear. Now remember that a linear function is y equals mx plus b. I just typed that in there so you could remember what all the pieces were. That's not actually going to get you the regression. To get the regression, we have to refer back to our x1 and y1 so that it knows what data to use. So whenever you're going to do a linear regression in Desmos, you start out in the same format. Instead of y equals, you're going to have y and then subscript 1. To do a subscript, you can push shift and the dash like you're doing an underscore. All right, now since we're finding an approximation and not equals, we're going to use the tilde, which is like the similarity symbol in geometry, um, and it's the poorly approximate symbol in uh, algebra. So to do the tilde, you do shift and then the uh, button with the tilde right under escape. So we have normally y equals mx plus b. Now we're going to have y1 is approximately m x subscript 1 plus b. All right, now if you look at this, you can see that Desmos has figured out some parameters that would make an equation that would fit. If you look at the orange line on the screen, you can see it goes through a lot of those data points. According to the parameters that Desmos has calculated for us, so we didn't have to do that because it takes forever, um, we have our M here of about a little over 1300, and here we have our B. Usually when you're using years, your B value is really, 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 really low. Um, you can also see your correlation coefficient, your R squared, which is uh, 0.967. Remember that your correlation coefficient is your I, the ideal 100% is 1, so we always want to get as close to 1 as possible. Alright, so this is our, our first data set. If we were going to look at that as equation, if you wanted to write down this equation to use multiple times, you would just write it down in the correct form. and you'd be good to go. You can see that overlaps that regression equation. All right, so that was with a linear parent, and our, we don't always have a linear parent, so let's look at another data set. I'm just gonna clear everything, and I could have done that simpler, but I wanted to do it that way, because I'm cool like that. All right, um, let's choose years and number of households. I'm gonna copy paste that data set just like before. You'll notice again, I have an X1 and a Y1. Um, again, it zooms for me, but I always like to move in a little bit closer to see what's going on. All right, this time it's not linear. This time it has a little bit of a curve. A lot of times when I see this fast growing bit, I think of exponential. So let's try an exponential. When uh, we're refining your exponential equation, it's y equals a b to the x. So we're going to do a very similar thing like what we did with linears uh, in terms of referring to our, va our variables x1 and y1. So I'm going to go ahead and right underneath that I'm going to do y1 approximately a b to the x 
one. You can do that subscript up there um, as well. If we go down and we look at this, oh, look at your R squared value, 0.654. If we look at the graph, the graph really doesn't match the data very well. This is making me think that maybe we didn't use the right parent. So if we think back to what our other uh, parent functions were, we also had a quadratic. And you know, quadratic makes that U shape. So let's go ahead and try that to see if it gets us a better fit, which means we'll be looking at the correlation coefficient. So just to remind you, the quadratic equation is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We're going to do the exact same thing we did before by referring to y1 and x1, and then the rest stays the same. So we have y1 is approximately ax1 squared. You'll see it starts uh, generating equations uh, based on whatever it is you put in there, but since I want the exact parent, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that in. Did you see what I did just there? I forgot to put my subscript 1. And that messed me up. All right, so here we have it. And that R value is much, much better at 0.987. We're getting very close to fitting our data. You can see that it gave us our three parameters that we needed. So if you wanted to look at this as a full function, we would have Y equals our A value times X squared plus our B value times x plus our c value, that y-intercept way, way up there. And there you go. You can see they match up on top of each other. and We can use that equation to find out more information about this situation. Now there's one last cool thing I want to show you um, before I move on, and that's going to be doing lots of regressions in the same window. So if I want to keep all of this data there and I want to do another regression, I can totally do that. So let's grab another data set. I'm going to use this time since 180. 180 since 1980. I apologize for that. I'm going to copy that in. Now you'll notice what's a little bit different is I am now referring to x2 and y2. That's okay. Everything else is going to stay the same. So here's my data set. I can edit my data set if I need to edit my data set as well. And then you can see that the graph came up. I'm going to change my zoom. Now this one is curved again, but this one is really, it grows really steeply, which makes me think that it's exponential. So I'm going to go ahead and use the exponential parent, y equals ab to the x, in order to find this regression. Now remember, we're referring to y2 and x2 this time, so when you type in your uh, re equation to make the model with, you want to make sure that you use those subscripts, otherwise you'll be using the wrong set of data. Alright, so when we look at this, I have a pretty good correlation coefficient of 0.932. It gives me my parameters here, and you can see that it fits the data pretty well. It wasn't as good as the last one we just did, but it did fit it um, fairly well, so we can make some relatively confident predictions using this equation. So this would be the equation y equals a. Oops, that's 5 b to the x. Cool. That's it. That's how we use Desmos to make regressions. Oh, fabulous.